hacking external data. In this video, you will learn how to embed images into the Blend file, both individually and collectively. Understand this is essential when sharing a Blend file with anyone else. Now note, it can create a bloated file if the external data becomes obsolete. And I'll show you how to remove external data. So let's hop straight on over into Blender. Okay, so back over in Blender, um, I must be so no, I'm not in solid mode, I'm still in texture mode. Um, content material, okay. If you ever go to your materials tab or you're rendering something and it comes out this magenta, this bright pink, it means you've done something to either, un basically, to hide your pictures, your textures from Blender. Uh, I know exactly what I've done. I've inadvertently moved my textures folder that I was working for for my downloads into the work pack that I'm currently working on, to the current working folder, funny folder, and that's broken these textures. So there's a couple of ways I can go about fixing this. I can move the folder back, but that defeats the point of having my work folder, so I don't want to do that. I could re-reference them all, and there's only three in this case, so that would be acceptable. Although if your project was much bigger, this that would be an absolute nightmare. Ren renaming or relinking hundreds of files, even tens of files, is going to be absolutely do. So we don't want to do that either. So, first of all, in order so you can experience some of this pain, I've got a short challenge for you. I would quite simply like you to rename your asset pack folder. So pause the video now, go and find it, and rename it. Put a one on the end or something like that, so it just changes what the folder is called. Okay guys, welcome back. Right, I have already essentially done that, in fact I've moved my folder, that's another thing you can do, but renaming it is probably the simplest thing you can do. So let's go ahead here and make sure that it's not working. So if you go over to File and open Recent, you can open up your file again and just make sure that you've now essentially broken your textures. If you go to the viewport shading and select material, you should see it being bright pink. Brilliant. Well, okay, not exactly brilliant, but it, it's to do this exercise, of course. So now we've got these three images no longer existing. Blender does not know where they are or what they do. Of course, you can rename your file and they'll all come back again, removing that one from the end or however you name it. However, if they're not, what you can do is simply relink them. So if you've all, so say you move the images to several locations on the hard drive, perhaps you created your own nature pack and want all the grass in one folder and then realized that you've broken some other blend files and you couldn't just move one folder back, then you'd have to relink them. So in order to do that, you can do it in the texture tab itself. We've got here grass blade 10 PNG. And if we open up this file here, we can navigate to the appropriate folder and I'm going to go here because I've got a shortcut for it. Your section assets, nature textures. Now, once I'm here, I don't need to find it again because the name is already pre populated. I can just click open image and we should see that coming back. Brilliant. Now, this image here, what I'm going to do to get this one back is I'm going to switch to the image editor. In fact, I'm just going to make my screen a bit more comfortable for me to get rid of the torture. I'm going to split it in two and just open up the image editor here so I don't have the between the screens. And the properties panel here, I'm just going to remove that. And I'm going to go to on the header bar here, there's a picture next to where it says render results my screen. And I can go ahead and look what's going on. So we've got a zero next to the grass blade 10. That means next time we open up this file after saving it, uh, that grass blade is going to disappear. So that's what that one sorted. But it's also produced this 001 at the end. And that's because Blender essentially has two files within its database that are, have the same name. So scrolling down a little, let's do the grass C, which is the middle one, I believe. And what we can do here is, if we open up the properties tab again, it's actually got a reference path that's up here with the, the image itself and a source path here. If we click refresh, nothing happens because it's, it's 
not refreshing any of these refreshing and empty files, something that doesn't exist. However, if I go to open, I can also go and find the file I want. So I'll go and do that now in my next nature textures pack and I can just click accept and that should come back. Now the benefit of doing it that way is if now we look on our items that are in our scene, pictures here, and the images, uh, it does, we haven't produced another of one of these zero zero ones, but this time around we've not, so it helps prevent this from by going into the image editor, going to the image that doesn't work, and adding it back in. Now, once we've done that, we can go ahead and select the grass scene, so we're in there now, and we can go to image and pack the image. And that will pack it into the blend file. Brilliant. Now, I don't know if you noticed that on the screen, but this source file here is no longer highlighted. It's essentially linked within the blend file. Now, fortunately for us, if you ever need to uh, link it to an external file again, you can do that. There's a little button here. Um, this is save an image into the pack blend file with this. And this one here is to unpack the file. So that will then, so we've got a couple of options here. Use file in the original location, create when necessary, we'll put it back exactly where it was before. And then we've got a source file again that we can use. So there's lots of options going back and forth. There's a pack button here as well. Pack and unpack are both there. Move the pack here, create some data on our hard disk as well. There's lots of options. But in general, you'll want to keep this within your web file and then it won't go astray. Now there's one final option here, and that is under the file menu, if you go down right towards the bottom, there's external data. And there's an option here to pack all into blend. Now this will pack absolutely all the external data that we've referenced into the one blend file. Now use this with caution depending on what you're doing. Now we can also turn on automatically well, which again has to be used with caution. If you're working with external material on a regular basis, say you're working with an artist who's great at doing textures, and they put their, let's say, their textures into a Dropbox file that you then reference, the downside of bringing it into Blender is if they do an update for you, you that won't automatically update your Blender file when you open up the Blend file again. That can be a disadvantage. Now, if we are only working by ourselves and we're only working with small images, then it doesn't matter. It's not going to bloat the file that much. If you've imported a movie and you go and add back to your blend file, your blend file is going to get huge all of a sudden, which may cause stability issues. Now, one of the great things about Blender is it's very customizable. So, what you could do if you wanted to safeguard any work that you are working on, if you if you like reorganizing your uh, Computer lots, or perhaps you've got someone in your family who uses your computer who likes organising it for you. Now I've got one of those, and we we can actually go to here, tick that, and then save the startup file as well. And you do that on a brand new file. So I'm just going to save the work I'm working on at the moment. Go into a new file, and you go to automatically pack it to blend and save your startup file and then that setting would exist in every single one you've opened up but bear in mind you may have to undo that depending on so one final thing when you have your file saved like this and we have automatic turned on you may get errors so the first error here is that my final pink square still missing so we'll have to sort that out. Um, the iris final PNG is not found so I've obviously moved that during one of my cleanups. You probably don't have that one missing and you may have a rabbit reference image missing as well if you're using the one to reference one. So of course I've got a challenge for you. I would like you to go ahead and relink missing files. So relink any missing files and switch on automatically pack just for this blend file. Now an optional thing is to turn this option on 
and save it to your startup file itself. I'm going to do that uh, myself. It's entirely up to you whether you do that yourself. So pause the video now and relink your missing files. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's hop straight on over into Blender. Right, so I'm going to uh, first of all focus on my pink image here. So it was the Grass Blade 2. Luckily in the outliner it gives me a clue. So I'm going to go to my source up the top here and open and go along to, that was in the properties of the UV editor, and go ahead and open up the correct file in the nature textures. Set should have been up. Brilliant, that's brought up. So I'm going to go ahead and automatically package the blend file. Okay, so I've got my iris and I've also got a rabbit reference that's visible. So rabbit reference is a background which I used earlier on. Now, arguably, whether or not that's important to me, I don't know at this stage. I don't think I'm going to use this again. So it, delete it that would also solve the problem but in this case I'm literally just going to remove its incorrect reference so I've got a similar option here I'm just going to just get rid of that there. so I can see what's going on I just want to go ahead and open up the correct one and what happened there was that it was a different name folder and there's the rabbit reference three so I can just click the set and I'm going to go file and save. Yes, and I've got one final thing, which is my iris. Okay, so that is a texture we have applied to the eye. So I'm going to have to do a couple of that one down. So the eyes, this is on there. Image texture, iris final, I think this is the one. And I've put that in my support dots with the image. I'm going to go file and save. Are there any more errors? Um, iris final, iris final. Ah, because I've done that, it's actually renamed it. There. So let's just see if we can bring in the appropriate one. In fact, let's see first of all if it's got a zero next to it. So EUV image editor, and let's open it up. So iris final, it's not got a zero next to it. So we can remove that um, with a cross just here. And as it says, to unlink it, we need to use the shift key at the same time. So I'm going to do that now. And when I press that, we should have forced a zero next to the iris file. I can have that open. Let's try it again. We'll go iris file. So I'm going to go ahead and save my file. It will come up with an error. However, hopefully when I reopen it and save, it's sorted. Now, because I've done a lot of work on something that I can't see, let's go and make sure that it is done before continuing. Now again, you might not have any of these issues on your rabbit. I'm just going to make sure I don't have mine. So let's zoom in. It looks like we've got the right texture there. Looks good. As it renders out, yet yeah, I'm happy with that that the iris has been Brilliant. How did you guys get on? I hope you've recovered all of your images so you've got no more magenta squares. And I will see you guys in the next lecture.